everyone, that's me, Jamie Royce Gomes, Outreach Coordinator for the Living with Fire program and newbie homeowner. Recently, I had a defensible space inspection performed on my house by Nevada Division of Forestry's Fire Protection Officer, Chance Hunridson. So let's see what happened during the inspection. Thanks for having me out. Should we get started with your uh, defensible space inspection? Definitely. Well, hold up. Now, aside from the items that I already posted in former blogs, such as replacing my vent screens with an eighth of an inch wire mesh, changing out my mulch to a non-combustible, or even maintaining my deck, Chance made me aware of other items. So, not to bore all of you with all old information, I'll review four additional yet important suggestions made by Chance. Recommendation number one, replace my wooden fence. My wooden fence should be changed to metal or even plastic fencing. As Chance explained, a wooden fence is a connector of flames. For example, if my neighbor's home is on fire, the flames would connect to the fence and then can catch my home on fire. If you are unable to remove the entire fence, create a non-combustible fence section or gate for at least five feet from the house. Also, be sure to keep the remaining fence in good condition, clear of flammable vegetation and debris. Recommendation number two, fuels on my slope. Now, I have a very steep slope in my backyard, and I estimate the slope to be about a 60 degree slope. Chance calculated that with such a steep slope, my defensible space should extend to 100 feet from my home. He recommended thinning out the sage in the rabbit brush to be twice the height of the brush. For example, if a rabbit brush was three feet tall, then I would multiply that height by two and ensure that the spacing between shrubs are at a minimum of six feet. Chance also recommended removing the largest shrubs first. He stressed that clear cutting the area of fuels is never the answer, especially when dealing with my slope as erosion could occur. Recommendation number three, remove and replace my railroad ties. Let's hear what Chance recommended. So this is a good example. You have slope here and, you know, back again to your railroad ties. I see these are performing a function as a retaining wall. Highly recommend using non-combustible concrete rock and getting these things out of here. We talk about defensible space and whether it's you and your family trying to defend your home from fire or a firefighter, once again, this stuff has toxic fumes that come off of it and it's hard to defend a property when you're having a hard time breathing. So it'd be a good idea to get rid of this. And the fourth and final recommendation is to remove a bush next to the house. Along the front of your property, I notice you've got some brush up against the house. We definitely recommend planting um, plants that don't grow so high, you know, within 30 feet of your home. Uh, one thing I like to point out to people is on a perfect day, you have this fire and let's say this brush is on fire. Well, the flame height will be twice the height of this brush. Oh. So let's say it's a, a four foot high bush you could have an eight foot fl high flame off of this. Instead of large shrubs within 30 feet of the house, use non-woody plants like annual and perennial flowers. Examples of better choices include tulips, marigolds, daisies, and turf that are irrigated and well-maintained. That concludes my lessons learned after my defensible space inspection. Remember, if you would like a defensible space inspection, contact your local fire agency. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at www.livingwithfire.info. I'll also leave a link so you can check out our interactive defensible space graphic on the website. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for following our blog and stay tuned for more.